proprietary estoppel gives effect to informal assurances that landowners give to third parties to the effect that the recipient of the assurance either already has or will have an interest in the landowner's property. Many proprietary estoppel cases occur in the family context. Parents tell their children that the children can expect to inherit the parents' property when they die, for example. Proprietary estoppel cases can also arise in the context of a marriage or the relationship between unmarried cohabitees. In some cases, for example, A persuades his partner B to move in with him. A assures B that A's property is B's long-term home. B might invoke proprietary estoppel if the relationship breaks up breaks up and A asks B to leave the home. The essential elements of a proprietary estoppel claim are A assures B that B has or will have an interest in some property owned by A. B incurs some detriment. B incurs the detriment because of B's reliance on A's assurance. A then acts inconsistently with the assurance and this is unconscionable in the light of 1 to 3. If a proprietary estoppel claim succeeds, then the court has a discretion to grant the equitable relief that it decides is necessary to remedy the unconscionability. When deciding whether elements 1 to 3 have been satisfied, the courts are sensitive to the family context in which the claim arises. There must be a clear assurance that B has or will have an interest in A's property. The judgments in the House of Lords in Thorner and Major cast light on the essential features of an assurance. The question is how A's words would reasonably be understood by B. The emphasis is on the objective meaning of the words in their context and not on A's subjective intention. Further, the courts should have regard to the context in which the words were used when interpreting them. A's assurance to his partner B that A and B would always be together in A's home or that B had a long-term home in A's property have been enough to give rise to a successful proprietary estoppel claim. Statements that might seem to be assurances about the long-term nature of the relationship might be interpreted as assurances that B has an interest in A's home. B must incur some detriment. It might be financial as where B pays money to A to help make to help A make mortgage payments. Detriment might be non-financial. It might take the form of providing services to B free of charge or foregoing opportunities such as employment opportunities. Where B leaves the region or country where she lives to move to A's home, this could be said to be detriment. Of course, B might be said to be enjoying rent-free accommodation in A's home and the courts are prepared to take this countervailing benefit into account when deciding whether B has incurred detriment. There must be a causal link between the assurance and the detriment. The assurance need not have been the sole factor that induced B to incur the detriment, but it must have been at least one of the substantial causes of B's decision to incur the detriment. There is a potential difficulty here since B will usually have been motivated by love or duty where A is B's partner or elderly relative. This is not fatal to a proprietary estoppel claim. Mixed motives are acceptable. It's enough that the assurance was one of the factors that drove B to act as she did. Even proving this might be difficult. The courts have, however, developed a sympathetic approach. For example, where A's assurance was intended to influence B and would have influenced a reasonable person, it's presumed that B was motivated at least in part by the assurance. If B renders services to A free of charge or for very little remuneration, then this can give rise to a presumption that B was motivated by A's assurance. Where B succeeds in proprietary estoppel, then the courts have a discretion as to the remedy, the equitable relief, to be granted to B. B might be given an ownership interest in the property. A might be prevented from evicting B, at least for a time. A might be told to pay financial compensation to B, perhaps repaying B any money that B had given to A, or compensating B for services that had been rendered free of charge.